living on my brain So bring the medication for my brain To heal the world of the nation from the pain And break up all the circles and the chains I need some meditation in my brain So bring the medication for my brain To heal the world of the nation from the pain Break up all the circles and the chains no, 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 this could never be no man killer Good be my head, so me call it as the man killer When me ill, you know me never need a painkiller It's quite exciting, me call it as the man chiller Give me good man, so me no think iller What a inspiration, be tone a sound killer Feed the peg and me spark it like a nine miller Fe fight the liquor and the coke and you had the pillar That's why me need some herb in my brain So bring the medication for my brain to heal the whole of the nation from the pain Break up all the circles and the chains I need some baby in my brain Bring the medication for my brain To heal the whole of the nation from the pain Recently, Vice President Kamala Harris went all the way to South Carolina to promote the White House's broadband expansion and improvement program to HBCUs in that they will have better access and better working internet. Now, I don't even know if it's free or not, but we know that South Carolina has become the first to vote in the 2024 primary elections for the Democrats. And we also know that in 2020, South Carolina put Joe Biden into the White House for a lack of better words. And so my thing is this, you went all the way to South Carolina to talk to them about the internet, but you didn't go and talk about reparations because if we get our reparations checked, we can get the internet we want or we can move to a place that's better, right? But the internet and no check, come on, surely y'all could do better than that for a place that puts y'all in the White House. <laughs> Greetings again, brothers and sisters and cousins from the other races who support our struggle for economic liberation. This is the third part or the third video uh, for the new Black History Makers in this Black History Month, and it's the last. In, in this series. The next history maker is Brother Hussein, Hussein Bolt, the sprinter, world record, old, fastest man alive, and uh, he doesn't need much introduction. However, our focus is not so much on his athletic achievement, but on his more on his business activities and um the, the it, last year I, I think it's last year during black history month also we we had a video that there was an entire segment dedicated to his business activities and again without going into that repeating that information um the most recent and well-known activity, business activity, has to do with the the uh, building, a commercial building, 
the Usain Bolt, it's a multi-million dollar uh, uh, building in New Kingston in Jamaica uh, that has space for commercial activities. And the building has what I, we consider as logo of him pointing to, to the sky. Um, and there are two slides that show the building. The other thing which I will mention briefly is that er earlier this year, uh, 2023, it became public that white collar criminals in a financial institution, well, so called financial institution in, in Kinson, stole about 12 million US dollars of his investment over time. He put the money in, in that, that, uh, mafia organization and uh, a lady is the lower down on the white collar criminal chain is the person who has been arrested so far but um, it's reported that there are higher ups maybe even going to the very top of the organization and um, the, uh, is the especially at the top they have good and strong political connections which I, i'm going to call the white color political criminals uh anyway uh we hope that brother bolt recovers if not all of his money at least a significant portion of it Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your contacts. Thank you. The next history makers, new black history makers, are Prime Minister Motley from Barbados and President Kagame from Rwanda. I'm doing both of them together because they are like two outstanding examples of African unity, the fight, Pan-African is fighting for African unity in the Caribbean and in Africa, as well as what they have been doing in their own countries to improve the majority of their people. In the case of uh, Prime Minister Motley, she's also an outstanding advocate for reparations. And she, wherever she goes, she's not afraid to talk, uh, whether it's in the United Nations before all the colonial masters or wherever she goes. Uh, President Kagame, uh, very outspoken and has achieved wonderful, very outstanding, good things in this country. And both of them are examples for other 
leaders or the African leaders in the Caribbean and in Africa to follow. Uh, video 47 is the most recent video I did of both of them. And I also, there was an earlier vid video when President Kagame visited the Caribbean, starting first in Barbados. And then when he went to Jamaica, went to Marcus Garvey's shrine. Uh, I don't remember what video that is, but I'll put up the slide. And, um, uh, and it's an ongoing and wonderful relationship between both of them. So uh, President Kagame, the achievement of ending that genocide in his country and turning the country around to become what it is today is just uh, wonderful. Aliko Dangote's 7 Ultimate Advice for Every Ambitious Young Person Aliko Dangote is a Nigerian business magnate, investor and owner of the Dangote Group which has interest in commodities in Nigeria, Benin, Ethiopia, Senegal, Cameroon, Ghana, South Africa and Zambia. According to Forbes magazine, Dangote is ranked as the richest person in Africa and the 100th richest in the world with an estimated net worth of 10.6 billion US dollars. He started Dangote Group as a small organization in 1981 and over time the organization has distinguished itself as an industry leader in cement, sugar, salt, flour, steel and recently investing in oil and gas. In today's video, we bring you Aliko Dangote's 7 Ultimate Advice for Ambitious Young People. By the way, if you have not subscribed to After School Africa channel, click the subscribe button and stay up to date with inspiring videos like this. Number 1. You must be consistent with your vision. When the mobile license we are on offer in Nigeria, Dangote could have bid successfully for a license, but he steadfastly refused because, as he put it, it was not my game. When oil blocks were on offer, he stayed away. Even though he had the money and influence to get the best of them, he did not chase every type of business like a man trying to get into everything. He stayed focused and remained consistent with his game. What is the lesson? You must focus on the thing you know best and get in very deep. You are bound to encounter challenges and difficulties, but never use those challenges as excuse to double into every seeming opportunity. In his word, life without challenges is very boring. Life is all about solving problems and learning from the experience. Success follows consistency. It is your ability to keep at it regardless of your challenges that sets you on the path to success. Number 2. You need information to make the right decision When we wanted to venture into manufacturing, Dangote and his team wanted to know why most manufacturing businesses have failed. In 1995, they invited a consulting firm, then Arthur Anderson, to help figure out cause of massive failure in manufacturing. After the retreat, they uncovered two reasons. One was lack of electricity and two was inconsistency in government policy. To solve this problem of electricity, they decided to generate electricity independently to run the company. For the second problem, they resorted to remain friendly with the government of the day. This could explain why Ali Kodangate rarely comment on political issues. 
The point is that this piece of information empowered them to make the best decisions in setting up the manufacturing business and saved them a lot of trouble in the future. Learn from this, make the effort to gather relevant information before making important decisions and with the internet, big data and data analytics, you may not have to look too far to find the information you need. Number 3. To be a good leader, you must be a good listener. There is no way you can make it as a person without the right team. Beginning his journey in business and leadership, Dangote valued the suggestions and opinions of his team. In an interview, he made mention of how he always takes the ideas of his employees into consideration because he believed that there is no way you can make it as a person without the right team. Sometimes, it might be difficult to be open to the ideas and opinions of others, especially when you are the head of an organization, but you must come to terms with the fact that your knowledge and experience is limited and you need people's knowledge, time and intelligence to make enviable progress. Brother Woodmeyer, I am almost sure, is the most popular person on the African continent. I don't think there is any leader in any country or anybody else as well known and as popular as Woodmeyer. Uh, for people who don't know, he got the name Woodmeyer. It's the Chinese for my mother when he was a student in China uh, 10 years ago uh, when he started his YouTube channel after he the Chinese there were saying all kind of bad things about Africa Africans being monkeys and living in trees and all of that stuff so he started his channel with uh, some of his school friends and over the years they have fallen off fallen by the wayside but he kept going and last year uh, end of 2022 his channel had reached a 100 sorry 1 million subscribers this brother has done a wonderful thing for africa changing as he says the narrative about africa in Africa and outside of Africa, especially reaching out to us diasporans and encouraging us to link up and uh, visit Africa, come to Africa, invest in Africa and so on. He has done a wonderful job. He's the, uh, I am going to say, the great ambassador, uh, ambassador for Africa. I mentioned Sister Arikana but um she's i don't think she's as well known as as Woodemeyer and as popular everybody knows Woodemeyer. uh when he's traveling we can see on his videos and so on when he's traveling how difficult it is people stopping him wanting to take selfies with him 
and so on. Uh, however, I am putting uh, Budmeyer with the brother from the Congo, who both of them, he, he, uh, Woodmeyer interviewed him last year or earlier this year, and there is a video. Uh, I showed the entire video with, with him, and that brother has started a, a cooperative in, in the Congo and had uh, over 2,000 people put in their pool in their small funds together and starting this uh, store supermarket and it's wonderful and he, he, there is a, he has plans he and the 2000 uh, people who at that time were in the in the cooperative plan to have several more um, supermarkets in the congo and africans uh, can invest africans in africa and outside of africa can invest a small amount uh, to pool their resources just like Marcus Garvey did uh, uh, almost a hundred years ago and um, uh, just uh, also well Marcus Garvey's organization was the leading one but recently we saw President Obama did the same thing and it's an example it's an example of Ujama cooperative economics which I think that's the way Africans African people in Africa and outside pooling our small uh, few dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, hundred dollars uh, together to be able to make big investments in Africa and outside of Africa, wherever we live. So in video number 40, 44, uh, it shows brother Woodemeyer interviewing Al Katenga, that's the name of the brother who leads the cooperative in the Congo. The other thing I want to say is that uh, Woodemeyer is the leading uh, voice YouTuber in Africa, but he's not the only one. There are many others doing a, doing a wonderful job, men and women, uh, 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 traveling sister, um, African tigress and others but I, I want to mention there's a, a, a brother who is also doing a wonderful job has over half a million subscribers and he's been doing it for years but he does not even mention his name he, he owns the make Africa great channel and I would be glad if somebody would would even let me know his name he doesn't even mention his name I assume he doesn't want to get personal fame or anything like that and he has a, a he has a farm operates a farm and he has show, he shows uh he does some of his videos on the farm and he's very much into uh, encouraging africans to produce their own own food uh finally we 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 need to have an african and diasporan uh web platform we need to own our own we can't all be depending on youtube and i have some videos some earlier videos where i go into details about that need okay
the last person who I will mention as another example of the new black history makers is Sister Oprah Winfrey. I am not going to say much about her. She's so well known in the United States, all over the world, I think and um, has made a, a, a wonderful contribution to the upliftment of the image of Africans in, in America and all over the world. Um, and she played a, a very instrumental, very important part in President Obama becoming the first African president of the United States. Uh, the main thing I will mention, though, uh, is the role that she played. Oh, she has made, uh, she's given a lot of money to, to a lot of worthy causes to help um, people, uh, mainly African people, but not only black people. Uh, but I want to mention the role that she has played in, in, uh, in Africa, in South Africa. That's cool that she finance and it has been going on for years now after um, uh, um, Archbishop Tutu and uh, President Mandela after she met with them and uh, she had a good relationship with both of them and after that she started that school in Africa. Uh, I'm not going to say much more and uh, because <laughs> she's so well known and all I can say is I, 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 I think that these it, it's, it's uh, the examples that they set in those initial contacts with Africa. It's now becoming so popular that there are so many American Africans and British Africans and Africans from the Caribbean all over the place are uh, going to Africa, visiting Africa. Some are uh, moving to live in Africa. Others are visiting, uh, making investment. But that link that has is being established, that has started, it is growing and the colonial powers cannot, whether the old ones in Europe, North America and the new Chinese colonizers they can't turn back that tide that is growing to make africa the uh uh independent economically independent economically liberated uh from the economic slavery that still exists in africa and outside of africa when it comes to african people I am reading the notes because I I know that on up, uh, on phones, person is looking at these notes on the phone will not be able to make out the small text that it's written in. The title of the slide is um, slide number one. Uh, notes notes number one for garden restaurant catering of your town look at the previous black economic network videos about how to grow your dollar tree also view video 18 especially the segment that is top 20 small business ideas for bus business catering and the number two uh, thing that he recommended was catering catering was the num the second business idea the garden restaurant model is a small and simple food service in a small and beautiful setting 
such as a small lot with a small kitchen, for example, a shed or a modified container, and covered space for protection against the weather, and having some tables and chairs or benches. The garden setting may be created by trees already in that location and by adding potted flowers and ornamental shrubs and palm trees to create a tropical garden setting. Uh, the business model is to start with a catering service from home with a plan to grow it into a garden restaurant. If you can get unpaid labor from relatives or other business partners until the restaurant becomes profitable, then you can do the uh, garden restaurant, but it's better to start with the catering service. In a previous video, I warned against starting a restaurant with paid labor. Notes number two. Step one, find out if there is enough potential demand to make your business profitable in one year or at least can break even in the first year. Do your homework in your target mar market to get information about competitors. Pay special attention to places with workers that need lunch. Focus on two or three healthier but tasty and more affordable meal meals, including drinks, that is inexpensive or cheaper than the other competitors. Your goal should be to create your niche of repeat customers by great quality products, also convenience and better customer service than the competitors. Start with a menu that gives a choice of a single item or combo sandwiches or cooked meal meals and slowly change or grow over time based on what customers ask for. Suddenly, you left me alone by myself. I realized it was my negligence, but not to fall beyond someone else. I should have known about your sudden death. In an instant was your life
Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your contacts. Thank you.